Hi everybody, Tony again here with Shinsho Yoga. And today I would like to work on Dhanurasana or Bow Pose. Bow Pose is a back bend. Uh, last week I uh, had, we did a video, we, me, <laughs> uh, did a video Strasana Camel, which is a back bend, intermediate to advanced back bend, depending on how you do it and, um, you know, uh, you're using props and modifying or not. Uh, bow is a little bit less complicated, in my opinion, a little bit less challenging, but again, it depends on your body. All back bends, even though we're getting into the back, right? You need to have that flexibility in the back. You really need an openness along the front of the body to be able to do it. Um, all back bends are like that because if the front of the body is shortened and tightened up, you can't go back. Doesn't matter how open your back is, how flexible your back is. My lower back is somewhat hyper bendy, right? I can bend a lot of things, but. Um, if I am tight along the front of the body and in here and shoulders and hips and legs and quads here, that is what's allowing you to go back, right? And if that's tight, you won't be able to. So you may struggle with back bends, but it may not be the actual back that is the issue. It may also be the issue, but it may be tightness along the front of the body. Now, Dhanurasana or bow, uh, is not as challenging as Ustrasana, camel, because we're not getting up on the knees and then doing that full kind of arched humping over. Uh, this is going to be done on the mat, right? And then we're reaching back and coming into the legs and pressing back. So you can do this more lightly, right? The posture can be done more lightly if you don't have the openness in the front of the body. But Anytime you're really working on back bends in a class, the teacher should really be working to open up that body to get into them. You know, um, a back bend, whether it's bow or it's camel, is still challenging. It's just one is more challenging to access the other. And if you haven't really worked to get the lower back moving, the back moving, getting the vertebrae open and opening the front of the body, you're going to struggle with it. So one of the things that we will use today in our practice in doing this uh, to show the modifications is a strap. If you don't have a strap at home um, practicing with this, you could use a belt, you know, but you'd probably have to be relatively long. You know, it can't be... <laughs> can't be your belt from third grade. <laughs> It'd have to be a relatively long belt. This is a six foot strap. This is the minimum I recommend to students for a home practice. Six feet, generally six feet is good enough. When you go into a studio, they usually have a much longer. Uh, straps are great for getting into a lot of, especially standing poses that can be challenging. You can use this to help support you, but they also work well for certain back bends, uh, especially down your asana bow. <laughs> Now, little side note on the name Bo, you have Dhanurasana in Sanskrit is Bo, and Urdhva Dhanurasana, which is upward facing Bo, which is a different posture that is often confused with wheel. Wheel is a whole other posture. Often um, in vinyasa flows, especially the teachers that I go to would offer Urdhva Dhanurasana in a practice, but sometimes they would mislabel it as wheel. Wheel is a different practice. Wheel is, is a back bend, uh, but wheel is really an advanced posture, and that's where you come into it from standing and you bend all the way back and bring your hands down. Where Urdhva Dhanurasana, upward facing bow, you come from on your back and you press up to it. Uh, I'll probably do a video on that in the next couple weeks, but I struggle with Urdhva Dhanurasana due to shoulder issues, and I like to use blocks to modify, but where I record this, I don't have a place to really prop the blocks up. You want to prop them up against the wall when doing that, so I got to figure out a way to properly demonstrate the modification. But anyway, let's just work on Dhanurasana for today. So, what you're going to do is you're going to come out onto your bellies on your mat. And again, you want to be prepped for this. This is not something that you want to do right at the beginning of your practice. 
Right? You want to be warm. Your back needs to be warm. The front of the body needs to be warm. Uh, I often have students come into a gentle sphinx before doing this and use this as somewhat of a resting pose to be able to open up the body. And I'll probably do a video on sphinx sometime too. I'll do a whole thing on back bends. There you go. <laughs> so, for Danyarasana bow, I'm going to show you the full version first, and then I will show you modified. So, starting laying flat on the mat, arms are long along the sides of the body. You're going to bend your knees, bringing the feet into the body. Then you are going to reach back and either grab on with one hand either to the instep, the ankle, or the shin. It really depends on length of arm, the openness in your body, etc. I happen to like ankle, right? It's just more fitting uh, for my body. And then doing the same on the opposite side. With your exhale, you are going to press back into the hands, pressing the legs back, lifting up, spreading the collarbone, lifting the head, and you'll breathe. And as the back opens and the front opens, if you can lift higher and higher, you do so. When you come out, don't spring, gently lower back down. Now, I like to have people just rock the hips out after that. What you don't want to do in Dhanurasana in bow is splay the legs out, right? So you don't want to come into it, have the legs out here like this, and you're coming in, you're doing this. That is not proper, right? You need the legs together. So, if in the process you can't get those legs together, right, to be able to lift and press back into it, right? You have to splay out because you can't reach back far enough. Strap. It's a little challenging to get set up with the strap because you're gonna have to loop it around the feet. So, how I will do this, I have to show you. You, you set up the same way bending the legs in, and then you're just gonna kinda have to kind of wrap it around here. This takes a little bit of work, right? Maybe you do one leg, if I can get the other one in there, and then the other. Now, you wanna bring this up to where it's about around the ankles, right? And you want it to be relatively tight so you can keep the legs together. So again, if you are splaying out in that, grab onto the strap. Then from here, the process is still the same. You press back into the strap and lift up. Now you probably won't get the same height that you would get the other way, but this is more about proper alignment. You want those legs in line with the hips and the shoulders, not splayed out. So if you have to, do this. Now when you come out of this, don't just release the strap. Lower with the breath, back down then release the strap. And again, I often have students just put the favorite cheek down and rock the hips out. So, the strap is a little challenging to get around the feet, but if you are splaying out in the process, you will want to use the strap. So again, Dhanurasana, bow pose. Starting on the belly, bend the knees into the body. Reach back with one hand, whichever one you want. Right? Grab either shin, ankle, or instep. All depends on your body. I go for ankle, that's what works for me. Right? And you wanna to come to the outside of the leg. Then, with the other hand, go back and grab shin, ankle, or instep. Keep it even, right? Don't grab instep on one and shin on the other. Keep it even. From there, with your exhale, press the legs back. You're not pulling yourself up as much as you're pressing the legs back. So press the legs back, and as the legs press back, then you open up and you lift off the mat, right? The legs should come off, the chest should come up, and you should be pretty much just on your torso. 
As you breathe, if you have the ability, press back a little more and you lift a little more and lift a little more. But remember to breathe. You can often get hold your breath in that posture. I do it sometimes. I gotta go and breathe. And when you come out, don't spring out. Gently release back down. The arms come down. And again, I have my students just put their favorite cheek down and rock the hips. If you can't get into it that way, if you can't, meaning that you do that and the legs splay out to the side, you can't keep them in line, you know, between shoulder and hip, use the strap, bring that around, press back into the strap, and then lift up and again, don't spring out. And always breathe and follow your breath. Follow the inhale, follow the exhale. And as your thoughts arise, acknowledge them, Allow them to pass by and return to the breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Thanks for watching today. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Namaste.